Hello, I'm Felix Brechtmann. I'm a PhD student in the group of Schiller Ingenieur at the Technical University of Munich. Welcome to my poster, an experiment-based functional gene embed. Gene function is central to a variety of modeling tasks in genomics. However, function in general is hard to encode. Therefore, we'd like to create a gene embedding that can be used as a proxy for function. Recently, functional genomic assays have provided rich systematic data reflecting gene function. Further, computational methods learning representations of protein sequences have been shown to represent gene function as well. However, the integration of these data types into machine learning pipelines requires cumbersome data curation processing and modeling, hindering rapid development of novel machine learning pipelines. To overcome all this, we want to create one um, embedding that represents function and can be easily integrated with novel models. Here we see an overview of this project. On the top, we see the four data modalities we're currently encoding in our embedding. On the left, an essentiality screen from the DepMap Consortium, the string gene-gene interaction network, GTEx gene expression data, and PROT-T5, a protein sequence embedding. Underneath, we see the rationale for doing this and the method we use to embed this data. And in the lower half, we see several prediction tasks which we use to evaluate our embeddings and which we are example applications of what we could use our embedding for. On the left, the prediction of cancer driver genes. In the middle, the prediction of HPO phenotype gene-associated genes. And on the right, the prediction of GBAS signals in leaf one chromosome outcross validation. First of all, I want to show you how we can use our embedding in trait gene prediction tasks. In all those tasks, we have predicted whether a gene is annotated to a specific trait or phenotype in a cross-validation. And we've read either reported the precision recall curve or the average precision. On the top left, we have predicted five manually curated disease gene lists and we have done the breakdown of our embedding to see that all individual components are contributing. Additionally, we have predicted all phenotypes annotated in the human phenotype ontology that have at least 20 genes annotated to them, which are around 2000. On the top right, you can see four example curves for four HBO terms and our prediction performance. We compare our performance against HBO Fuller, a dedicated tool developed for this task. On average, across all tasks, we roughly double the average precision compared to HBO filler. In the lower two panels, we checked whether we can improve state-of-the-art cancer driver gene predictions tools on Covar and Emoji by integrating our embeddings with them. To do so, we took their predictions, combined them with our embedding and trained an extra boost algorithm on top of this. And in both cases, we could show that we can improve the, uh, these prediction tools by integrating our embeddings. Next, we wanted to check whether our embedding is predictive of GBAS signals. This has been previously done by POPs, where GBAS summary statistics were aggregated to the gene level and then predicted from a gene feature matrix, which was created from gene networks, RNA-seq, and PathFix. We could observe that our much smaller embedding is performing on par or slightly better compared to the algorithm designed in the POPs paper. Last, we want to evaluate the effect of literature curated PPIs on predictions. For this comparison, we only used a string network once we embedded the entire string network and once we removed the literature determined edges from the string network and embedded this reduced version of string. On the left hand, we can see the prediction performance in the GWAS prediction task, where we can see that the prediction performance basically does not change depending on whether we remove or don't remove the literature mind edges. 
On the other hand, when we look at the prediction of our disease gene lists, we can see that the literature-derived literature edges in string substantially improve our prediction performance. Here we want to raise the question whether the improved performance on the right is more due to a circularity in the data than actual information added to the string network. Given that we cannot see a similar improvement on measured data on the left. Overall, we generated a representation of human gene function, drain and gene expression, genome-wide CRISPR screens, protein-protein interaction, and protein sequence data. Using these embeddings as input for standard supervised learning tasks, we could rival or outperform state-of-the-art models. Further, we have shown that removing literature-based data from the training data of the embedding reduces potential entertainment biases. We hope that our embeddings representing gene functions can be easily integrated into machine learning models that predict other gene properties. Thank you for listening and feel free to reach out to me with questions.